Hello, hello. Look at these friendly faces. All right, Adila. Hello, hey Sarah. Hello, her. Beautiful. It is our last AI learn teeny. What? How did the time pass so fast? Um, if uh, you're here for the first time, welcome. This is uh, Andy Shakers community, <laughs> a, a community of practice for Andy professionals. AI Lentini was our October month. We really deep dived into the topic of AI for learning and L&D with uh, community members and also experts um, that we invited to share their learnings with us. And I am, as always, since we are a global community, very interested to hear where everyone is tuning in from and to also kick off the chat. You find that at the bottom of your screen. Do let us know where is home for you? Where in the world are you right now? Okay, good morning, Luciana, Uruguay. Yes, yeah, bueno. salute, Anka. <laughs> okay. Europe is going strong here. Czech Republic. India. Germany. All right, India. Is it Diwali today? Happy Diwali. Hey. And also, I don't know if there is anyone here celebrating Halloween, but Halloween is also happening today. So a happy Halloween in case you're celebrating. Wonderful. Um, let me kill the music here. And welcome you all to the last Lentini. It is a pretty fun one today because we are going to get to work. <laughs> Amir has a couple of... Uh, interesting challenges for us. I am very happy to have met him um, through LinkedIn. I think it was someone that introduced us, uh, Amir, and uh, he kindly accepted our invitation to join us as the CEO of Think Big Leaders and an experienced business innovation and transformation leader. He's also the senior member, mentor, and lead for the AI thematic group at Sweden's Innovate leaders association so it's short to say amir that you spend a big chunk of your time thinking about ai playing with ai experimenting with it thank you so much for joining us today i'll pass the talking stick to you the floor is yours and let's see what we all learn from you thank you very much and very happy to be here and to try and, and share some of my knowledge uh yeah and why am i here and why am i re interested in AI and in learning and development. So maybe I can start by just sharing my screen and then that will provide the background uh, a bit. Uh, so just confirm you can see my slide. Yep, all good. Perfect, good. And this is what we're going to do. You're gonna be building learning experiences, prototypes in minutes uh, with a tool which is called AWS Party Rock um, and you know, by way of introduction. So my career is like 25 years in, in, I would say two, three themes. One is learning and development. So I've been a learning training manager at uh, Teva Pharmaceuticals, Motorola, also at AWS. I, I learned, I was director of products in two learning, uh, edutech or learn tech startups, uh, building virtual reality and uh, AR solutions and also building uh, LMSs, e-learning, all sorts of things. So that's one theme. So l and is, is very close to my heart. I was the um, chairperson of the uh, learning conference in Israel and involved in that community. Um, and then the other theme is uh, innovation. Uh, so I've also been innovation consulting and I led some innovation programs. And the third theme that kind of maybe complements this these two is AI, and I've been doing things with AI. Um, I am now in Sweden. So I moved to Sweden about four years ago with AWS. I led the innovation program for AWS in the Nordics. On the right, on the other side, you can see some of the customers that I've been working with and helping um, in the Nordics, in uh, Europe, in Israel, 
uh, and so forth. So that's just a bit about me, why am I here, and uh, what I bring to the table, uh, and then what we want to do today. So I'll give you a quick intro to AWS Party Rock, um, and you'll try it out as a user first for a few minutes. Um, and then I'll show you how to build your prototypes uh, and connect it, obviously, to kind of to LND flows, but you can use it for other uh, use cases as well. And then we'll just take a few minutes to wrap up and think big. Well, how could this or maybe the higher, the, the more general theme of AI and AI tools and no-code tools uh, connect to whatever you're doing in LND or in your life? Um, I don't have a martini, I have a beer. So when you are working, uh, I'll just pour myself the beer and and um, have fun. Uh, so this is why I set it up so that you work and I get to have fun. But um, having said that, of course, you know, reach out uh, throughout the session. If you have questions while I send you on the tasks, you know, either open your mic or just write in the chat. I'll be monitoring that. Uh, and I'm Anna Maria, if I miss anything, you, you'll kind of... Um, draw my attention to it. And you, you, I'll also give you in the end some some links to how to reach out to me, how to learn further with a course that I have for you and, and so on. So uh, let's let's start with this, this uh, intro to AWS Party Rock. What is AWS Party Rock and, and what can you do with it? And you'll have your first uh, taste of an exercise uh, in a few minutes. So basically AWS Party Rock is something that was built by AWS by Amazon Web Services as a playground to uh, let people feel how can you build stuff with with uh, generative AI applications, and it's a bit different than you know maybe some of the other tools that you're used to that are like ChatGPT or uh, uh, like even text to, to image tools because you can build flows and you can build applications that are that demonstrate what can generative AI do for you. So you have a bit more control on what the application actually does. OK, um, and I'll show you how, how you can uh, use that level of control. But it still doesn't require any technical skills. So it's still no coding, very easy to use. And you'll see within minutes, you can create uh, real good stuff. But it is just a playground. So I wouldn't go as far as building production applications there. But it's good to prototype. That's why I call it kind of building prototypes. Maybe for your own flows, it's still it's good enough. Okay, and and uh, maybe for a small group of people who work for s specific things, maybe with not private information, that's okay. But just as to set the scene, what is this good for? Uh, later, if you want to use this prototyping to go to production, there's ways to do it either on AWS on, or on other platforms. Uh, uh, but that is just the first step. Uh, so here are some examples, right? So what can you build with with uh, Party Rock? And these are just you know a few. Things that I played with, um, I built a storyteller, and you, there, and you can build a storyboard. You can just write a short text and say, "This is what the story is about." It's going to create the scenes for you, then it's going to create the images for you. I'm terrible at uh, anything to do with uh, visuals and images, and when I create storyboards for customers around customer journeys or learning journeys or learning experiences, this is very helpful. Or when you're creating like e-learning and you want to create like a first. A uh, uh, mood board of that uh, of the of the story. That's a great idea. Uh, when I do innovation, then voice of the customer is very important, right? You want to create personas. You can you want to create problem scenarios. You want to explore, empathize with the customer. So there's I, I built a tool for that. Uh, and for my personal use, I, I also use this kind of LinkedIn post generator. Right? So I have a, an idea. I want to write something, but you know. I wanted to make it a bit more thoughtful. I, I can do it in different languages and then include emojis or not. So you'll have links to all of these, but these are just examples. And basically the, the starting point should be, what is the, the use case that you need? And then you can, what I want to hopefully, what you come out of this session is, okay, now I have a tool set that I can build all kinds of workflows, not just the examples that Amir shared. Okay, so basically, Two things that I, I suggest that you think about of building. Uh, the first one is uh, tools that boost your own, either personal or your own team's learning and development team work processes. So these are kind of more uh, targeted towards your productivity. So when you're doing planning, creating content, reviewing content, um, uh, you know, whatever is your focus um, in your L&D 
efforts, right? So that's one direction to, to think of. And the second direction is creating learning experiences for your audiences, right? So role playing, um, learning plans, things that help them in their flows, right? Or, or create experiences that enrich the, the intake of the learning. So these are the two types that I invite you to think about as you're going through this and then as you're choosing maybe a use case to, to play around with, okay? So that's the very quick introduction of what it is. And I'm gonna show you later how to build, but I want you to first experience it as a user, as a learner. So the first task, which you're gonna do, is you're gonna um, go into, don't do it yet, just wait a sec. I'm gonna send you a, a link with all kinds of links that, that you can try. You're gonna sign up for AWS Party Rock. It's free to use. Uh, you can sign up either with your uh, Google account, your Amazon account, or your Apple account, right? So you just uh, do that. And then uh, I put a link for you with several uh, places that you can play around with, with uh, all kinds of, of applications that are pre-built. But I also ask that you just limit it to like six minutes and don't try to build anything. I, I know that you know people here are sometimes tempted to build quickly, so don't go there, that, there yet. We'll have time for this. Uh, the page, I created a page for you, and this is the link. So uh, I can also paste it in the chat. Where is the Zoom chat? Uh, 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 uh. So this is the link for all the things that we will be using in the workshop for you. And the page specifically uh, is this. Uh, so you'll click this one to get to AWS Party Rock. And once you sign up, takes you about a minute, then you can try the different uh, experiences. So for example, I have this personalized learning path generator and you just go in, it's pretty self-explanatory. There's uh, you know instructions here, There's these are kind of input fields that you have to put things into. And then either you put it on autoplay and it plays immediately, or you just click play to go to the next step every time. So you have several links here. There's also a link to the Discover page. And basically in the Discover page, there's all kinds of applications that other people built, and you can just go and try them out. In terms of the applications that I built, all of them are basically just required text input. The only one that is that requires to, to upload a file, there's a quiz question gener uh, creator. So here you write some things about the quiz, but you also have to upload a file for which you want the, the tool to create questions for. So this is only if you have like something very close by that you just, okay, I can drop this file and that's it. Any, before we I send you on your way, any questions on the task? Maybe just how much time do we have to explore? So seven minutes, one minute to oh, sign seven. up, okay. six minutes to uh, to actually try it out. Uh, and if, if you're getting stuck or something, just ping me uh, on the on the chat and I'll try to, Right. So, having said that, we can uh, put on some uh, music. Uh, you want to do it? So, uh, excuse I, I me. I mean, yeah, we just browse the page and click on whatever we want. Yes, oh. you you go to this page, which is thinkpeakleaders.com slash shakers. Yeah. And sign up through one of for this link, and then you can just pick any of these links just oh. to try it out as a user. And maybe make some notes about you know questions or how is how is the experience? Is it easy? Is it not easy? That's it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Choose one. I suggest I mean six minutes is just maybe enough for one. If you see that you have a couple of more minutes, then try another one. Okay. Uh, we can send you on your way. I'll stop sharing my screen, and then you can uh, we can put on some music maybe, Anna Maria. And I'll pop up my beer. So until, let's say, three past 23, sorry, 1223 on my clock, you know, calculate it to your time zone. Cheers.
So just a couple of more minutes. If you've tried one, you can uh, try another one. And if you want to save, I'm going to share my screen now, so maybe it's going to take over the music. Uh, if you want to save what you've done, what you can do uh, is take a snapshot. So if you click this camera button, it's going to take a snapshot of the output, and you can then return to those snapshots. So for example, here, I loaded a snapshot of the storyboard that I created, and then I can review it. And if you really like it, you can also export it to Word by clicking this button, OK? So if you want to save whatever quiz questions it created for you, and you want to now, I, I just saved you like maybe three hours in your work or 10 hours, then you can export and and really take a martini because you just boosted your productivity. So one more minute, two more minutes, and then we're going to build some ourselves. Any questions? Did anybody want to share? Uh, how was it? W were you able to? Which application you used? Uh, how did how did it feel? Was it easy? Did you struggle with anything? Just open mic and uh, comment. Oh, somebody's already training their objections handling. Anna. <laughs> Yeah, my question is whether I can talk to it. No, not in this in, in this uh, application. So there are, you'll see also later when I show you how to build, this is not the, it doesn't have the most uh, cutting edge features that other applications have. So for example, speech to text or not even the most advanced AI module models. But that's why I said it's also, it's good for prototyping, right? And then you can think, okay, what if we could add text to speech or speech to text there? Okay, that probably requires more sophisticated tools uh, that build on top of that. Um, yeah, Ana Maria, you created a mind map in a few seconds. Nice. I have a, I have a question um, about the different apps. So you've created those apps, you said? The first, like the one we find in the list, yeah, right? The links that are there, the, I created them in a few minutes. And can I, um, can I use it? Because to me, it doesn't yes. okay. like a prototype, but it... Yeah, so how can you use it? So basically, what you, you can go in and these type of apps, which are either, and I'll show you, either public so everybody can see them. Like if you go to the Discover tab, that's public uh, applications that people have built and shared with the community and you can use them, it's free. Uh, I'll show you that basically there is supposed to be that there is a quota, but I've been using this for a year. I haven't even gotten close to the quota. Um, and the the other way to 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 use apps is if somebody shares you uh, shares with you a private uh, um, a shared uh, link, then you can still use their app. So the applications that I shared with you are not available on the public marketplace. I just gave you the links. So basically, yes, you can use them. It doesn't count to anybody else's account or anything, and nobody else can see what you have created in the actual content. So it's for you, okay? Unless you share the snapshots, because you can also share the snapshots. Okay, so if this was fun, um, some people Sorry. created learning paths. Yeah, any other? Oh, thoughts? yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe it's just because my brain is slow because I'm in Australia and it's late at night here. But um, <laughs> uh, I went to create a mind map, for example, and I, I don't see the advantage. Like you, I, from what I understand, if I understood properly, but I have to put still in all the data. So how does that save me time? So first of all, these are specific applications that I built that require certain flow. If you your flow, mm. has a, so if you say, I just want to upload a document, like there is this quiz generator and I wanted to process that document. Okay, so mm. that's your flow. So this was just to show that there are, you can build your own flows, whatever way you want. And you should, yes, you should. And this is what we should be talking about now. How do you plan these flows and how do you build them? Okay, so you've experienced this a bit as a user. 
now I want to take you and actually show you how you can build because this is your next task and I can have finish my beer. Um, and then now we're going to move to actually building. How do you build on, on uh, Party Rock? Before I show you actually uh, uh, an example on Party Rock, I give you some framework to, to keep in mind. So there's three ways that you can build applications on Party Rock. You can start with a prompt. You can tell it, okay, I want to build an app that allows the user to upload a document and it processes it like this and da 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 da, and it creates the flow for you. That's the simplest, but also the less flexible. I, I don't find the result always aligns with what I expected, but I'll show you how you can do that. The second one is start from scratch, the canvas. That's what I'm going to show you. That's what I suggest that you usually use. And then very quickly place widgets on, on the canvas and, you know, uh, uh, design them so that they achieve what you want. And the third way to build applications is in somebody else's application. Like, for example, you like maybe my storyboard application, and you just copy it, clone it, and then you can change it. Maybe that's the fastest way. So there's, it's almost as, as, as I want it. Maybe I just want to add something in the end. I want to change something, or I want to change the instructions to be in Spanish or whatever. Okay. So these are the three ways that you can use to create apps on Party Rock. Uh, but I suggest that before you create an app, you think about the flow. Okay. So this is the flow, either for myself, if it's a productivity flow, or a learning experience. For my users, for example, if you've tried the objections handling, they say, what is the situation? Who is the persona? And then they they do some objections handling, and in the end, they get some feedback, right? So think about the flow, even if it's like three, four steps of your own work process or the learner's experience, and then build whatever applications you build around this flow, okay? This is an example of you know creating a quiz questions and reviewing them and refining them, et cetera, okay? So start with that, like even just a quick draft. And then which widgets? And I'm going to show them on the canvas it's, uh, itself. So there's three widgets which are not AI powered. One is the static text. You've seen maybe some instruction widgets that I put in my applications. Uh, the other is user input. So you can you know ask the user to input any information which is relevant for the flow and for the experience. And the third one is document upload, right? So if you did the quiz uh, generate question generator, you would upload like a, a reference document uh, where which was the, the base of. So these are kind of very straightforward. The AI powered uh, widgets, there's three of them. And you know maybe Party Rock will add more in the future. One is text generation. So according to some instructions that we see how we'll see how we build, it's going to generate text based on the inputs from the other uh, widgets that you see on top, or based on uh, text other uh, widgets that it actually already generated before. There is text to image generation, and then there is a chatbot, right? Like we had in the objections handling and things like that. So these these are these all are AI powered, using different models. Uh, now I'm going to turn over to the canvas and show you how you actually create them. So if you go to the homepage, if you create, as I said, if you create generate, there is the, uh, here, this is the the one that I'm not going to show you now. You just write, I want to create this type of app and it's going to generate the app for you with the canvas. But I want to show you build manually, which is the empty canvas. And then basically you just get a canvas. Here you quickly change the, uh, title of the widget, so say example example app, right? And you just save it. And then you can add widgets. As I said, this is the input text, right? So this one I use often when I create like instructions or things like that and say, okay, I just put it here. So these are the instructions. Uh, sorry, that's the user input, right? I did a mistake. So I'm gonna cancel this one. And I'm gonna delete widget. And I'm gonna add the static text. Okay, and these are the instructions. And then I can just put a title here and one, line one, and so forth. And then I save it and it's here. I can very easily resize it, move it around, you know, however I want. So that's the instructions. Same goes for user input. You just say 
input field or whatever title you want it to be. Uh, you can put a placeholder, so input your name, and then you save it. And again, this is going to be a field. Size it as, as, as you want, and so forth. Similarly, document upload, just easily. You just write, you just put, uh, sorry, document upload. Why is it? Because of Zoom is going crazy. I'll just put it somewhere else. Let me put it here. Maybe it was too small. And then doc, OK? And then users are going to be able to upload their doc. Now the interesting ones are the uh, AI ones, right? So let's go with text generation. And here, you have the title you write here. So generate blah, blah, blah. example. And then this is where the, the important stuff happens. This is basically where you write the prompt. And I don't. I, we don't have time today to teach you how to write prompts. Hopefully, you have some idea on how to write prompts. But let's say I want to based on uh, based on the input field. I wanted to uh, write um, ideas for learning games for the, and then I do this, and I put the input field. Okay, so I can reference the content of other widgets by doing this. And if I had a document, then I could also say, OK, and the document upload, right? But in this case, I'll just do this, and I'll save this. And the other thing, before I save it, here you can choose the model. So this is generative AI models. They're, they have different ones. You don't Again, we won't have time to go into the capabilities of each one. Um, but let's go with, with uh, Claude 3.5 Solent, which is probably the most advanced. Temperature. That's a, a parameter that controls how creative the generation will be. The more you go towards one, the more creative it is. The more you go towards zero, the more it follows instructions. OK, so let's go with seven. And you can ignore the top P. And I'll save this. Sometimes you get this to help me figure out all the buckets. I'm, I'm trying to build an AI tool that will do this for me. But anyway, but. To test it, what I can do now, so OK, uh, it's going to generate some things around, I don't know, learning experience about um, AI compliance, right? Learning experience games. And now I can do play. And now it's generating ideas for, and it was a, obviously a very simple prompt, right? So uh, the result is also very simple. But the more sophisticated you create, uh, the more, the better the, the output will be. So here we got 15 examples of ideas. Uh, and then you, the other widget, image generation, similar. You do a title here. You decide the prompt. And again, you can say either, usually what I do is I create a, I have a text generation widget, which creates the, what kind of image I want to create. So if there's the storyboard, here's the image for scene one. And the text generation creates that text. And then you say, create an image of whatever this is. Here are the models. There's two models for image generation. I suggest go with stable image core. Ignore the other stuff. Uh, and that's uh, image generation. And for the chatbot one, again, apart from the title, the prompt, you give it a prompt, what do you want it to chat about? So in the objections one, I said, this is the setting. You're talking to a user who's training their objections handling. The story, the scenario is in this field. The persona is in this field. Give them feed, you know, play, answer with short answers, all kinds of things that I want the, the chat to behave like. And again, I choose the model and I choose the temperature. I know how creative or how strict do I want it to be. This is, I know it's very quick and simple, but should give you enough to start to, to play around with. So you can uh, uh, try things out. Uh, so that was the demo. And your task for the next 20 minutes is to think about what you will build, right? Think about the flow, as I said. What are the steps in that flow for either your own productivity or a learning experience? Plan um, the widgets and start placing them. If, if you feel this is a bit too much and overwhelming, you can take one of the existing apps and remix it and look at the prompts there and change them and maybe move around and remove a widget, add a widget, things like that. 
I see there's a question, yeah. Ana Maria. Yes. If I want to add a set of data that the app should feed from and not like have it creativity zero, I just want you to take information out of the, that data set. Is that in that doc that I am what? uploading? Can you give me an example of, of a data that you... A hundred peer-to-peer -peer learning formats for different so, size groups, et cetera. So you would have to have a document where you yeah. would upload there. So otherwise it's hard. It, you cannot uh, direct it to external information. That's, again, one of the limitations of party ROM. So and either so you put it, it in the prompt itself, yeah. which okay. would make it too long in this case, or you build for yourself a place to upload a document, and in that document you would have that information. And so the user can see the document, download the document, or they do not see the document. No, no, you would have to set. give them the document, or uh, you know, uh, basically use it just by yourself. But I suggest, I mean, okay. think of a flow where this works for you, right? A prototype for either a productivity uh, yeah. booster that would help you or your team, or a learning experience. If it's too hard, just take one of the existing ones, click Remix, and play around with it. I'm here for answering any questions and helping out. And um, we can also, I'll, I'll stop sharing and we can put the music on. And I suggest if somebody's, mm -hmm. uh, let's see if there's uh, some more messages on um, questions. How do we remix different apps? No, the remix is just to take one app and make it your own, copy it and then play with it. You can't combine different apps together. Um, the information, okay, safe and secure. Uh, don't put any private information there about people, about your business, about you know uh, your customers. Uh, so just you know more general stuff. Uh, it's again, it's a longer conversation. Uh, and if it's it's uh, advanced, as some people say, just take one, remix them, just play around with something, just change one of the prompts, or add one widget so you can tweak it a bit. So. Depending on how comfortable you feel, just go ahead uh, with it. Okay, we can uh, start the music um, and let's be back five minutes before the hour so we can wrap things up. If you need help, ping me and uh, I'll try to help. 